This same sun has risen on all the religions of man since the beginning of time. It has watched them rise to heights of inspiration and devotion and descend to competition for the sake of power, influence and riches while the proponents of each claim for themselves the only God and the only way. Looking back through history, we can see how each religion grew out of a particular time and set of circumstances in an attempt to satisfy mankind's desire to reconnect with the source of the universe. Now comes a teacher whose vision transcends the factionalism of the past to tell the world that all faiths are facets of the truth, all are tributes to its glory. The name of Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba is often spoken of in the context of the miraculous. Here, however, we will focus on his message, a message which speaks to the nature of God, man, religion, and every aspect of the universe we live in. Sai Baba's message is universal, yet specific, ancient yet timeless, and through it, people of all faiths are coming to see their own religion in the light of a larger truth. They are coming to experience the revitalization of spirit which comes from the expansion of consciousness and the release of fear and negativity. They are finding the joy of discovery that the power of God's love exists in all faiths. Sai Baba's message is being received by people of all ages, at all levels of education and sophistication, and at every economic level. It is being taught through schools, universities, discourses, books and films, and through the personal contact of his presence, spoken or in silence. The setting remains the same, Prashanti Nilayam, in English the abode of highest peace, an ashram in South India where Satya Sai Baba walks daily among those who have come to ask, through letters or unspoken prayers, for help and inspiration. ప్రేమ స్వరూపులార ఈనాటి బాల బాలికలకు పవిత్రమైన మన భారతీయ సంస్కృతిని వారి హృదయానికి చేతగానికి తగిన ప్రయత్నం చేయాలి whom the muslims adore as allah the christians as jehovah the hindus as shiva the one god is the god of all mankind religions attempt to implant holy ideals in the heart of man but man does not allow them to grow his egoistic craving for power and competitive success has in most cases persuaded him to use religion as an instrument of torture and persecution instead of uniting mankind in a common endeavor it has become a system of walled enclosures guarded by hate and fanaticism religion therefore is being condemned as the root of chaos and conflict and religious animosity is a flame in the world It has to be emphasized that religion is not the root cause of this state of affairs. The fights and fanatic hatred are due to the unruly ego that is given free play. Religion strives to destroy just this vicious tendency. So it has to be supported, not condemned. What has to be condemned is the narrow, perverted attitude of hating those who do not agree with us or who hold different opinions of the mysterious force that animates the universe. The process of splitting into diverse viewpoints has taken place in all the major religions. Islam has the Shia and the Sunni sects. Christianity has its Catholics and Protestants. Hinduism has the sects of Vishnu and Shiva. But however deep the cleavage, no sect denies God and no sect extols violence and falsehood. Names may be different, the facets emphasized may be different, but the almighty providence is denoted as absolute and eternal the terminology may be different but the concept is not the lord is referred to as bhagavan as allah as jehovah but the undercurrent of energizing power in all cases is love love of all beings toward all beings the founders of each religion had ever in view the unity of all life and the progressive march of mankind from mere humanness to the heights of divinity
love toward all beings that flows from Satya Sai Baba has been drawing people to him for more than 40 years. Its magnetic appeal is even experienced by the animals at the ashram. Ashram is situated next to the rural South Indian village of Puttaparthi, where Satya Sai Baba was born. It was here that Sai Baba, at the age of 14, revealed he was the reincarnation of a saint known as Sai Baba of Shirdi. Sai Baba of Shirdi had lived in an area of western India where Hindus and Muslims existed amidst constant strife. One result of his presence was to successfully create harmony between them. As Satya Sai Baba, his scope has widened to promote harmony among followers of all faiths. There are many signs of this within the ashram, and now in the village of Puttaparthi, Sai Baba has constructed this mosque for the followers of Islam who come to him. The actual site of Sai Baba's birthplace, a house which formerly stood here, went unmarked until 1979, when a temple was built on the same location. The opening ceremony was presided over by Vedic pundits, chanting traditional mantras, and Sai Baba also attended. <laughs> In speaking about the nature of humanity, Sai Baba has said, Your reality is the soul, a wave of the supreme universal soul. The one object of this human existence is to visualize that reality, that soul. Mankind is endowed with two special gifts, the faculty of reasoning and the faculty of analysis and synthesis. Use these gifts for discovering the truth of yourself, which is the truth of everyone else, of everything else. The Vedic scriptures are the earliest testaments of the victory of man over himself and his discovery of the underlying unity in all creation. They declare God is the inner reality of all beings. All this is enveloped by God. All this is God. How does this principle express itself in mankind? As spiritual love. Love is the basic nature that sustains and strengthens the resolve to march ahead. Without love, mankind is blind and the world will be a dark and fearsome jungle. The scriptures also laid down four goals. Morality, wealth, desire, liberation. They teach that mankind must earn wealth through the path of righteousness and that there should be only one desire, the desire for liberation. Now, humanity is drowning itself in desires, the fulfillment of which can never quench the deeper thirsts. The widespread anxiety, fear, and unrest evident all over the world are the consequences of this mistaken course. For children, Sai Baba has directed the establishment of a Balvikas program called Education in Human Values. 
This program is for the children an education in those values of truth, righteousness, peace, and love, which are central to all religious teachings and the sole property of none. The children of various faiths are taught to know and respect the beliefs of others while practicing their own. And one day a year, a teacher's conference is held and representative groups of children come to Prashanti Nilayam for Baba's darshan. To the children, Sai Baba says, The human body, so filled with skills, so capable of great adventures, is a gift from God to each of you. It has to be used as a raft on which you can cross this never calm sea of change that lies between birth and death, bondage and liberation. Awaken to this primal duty when your physical and mental faculties are keen. Do not postpone the launching of the raft, for it may become unserviceable soon. It may be burdened with illness, so that all your attention will have to be spent on its upkeep. Think of the incomparable joy that will surge within you when you approach the shore of liberation. Ride safe on the raging waters of life. Be a witness. Do not crave for the fruit of action. Leave the consequence of all acts to God's will. He is the doer. You are but the instrument. Pursue nobler ends. Have grander ideals. Sensory pleasures are trivialities. Saints and sages have discovered the disciplines that will keep you unaffected by defeat or victory, loss or gain. Learn them. Practice them. Establish yourself in unruffled peace. To the parents, teachers, and children, he says, In homes and schools, training of the minds of the young on these lines has to be taken up earnestly by teachers and parents. Of course, they must equip themselves for this work by steady practice in meditation and repetition of the name of God. The purpose of living is to achieve living in God. Everyone is entitled to that consecration and consummation. You are the truth. Do not lose faith. Do not belittle yourselves. You are divine. I have come to light the lamp of love in your hearts, to see that it shines day by day with added luster. I have not come to speak on behalf of any particular religion, like the Hindu religion. I have not come on any mission of publicity for any sect or creed or cause, nor have I come to collect followers for any doctrine. I have no plan to attract disciples into my fold or any fold. I have come to tell you of this universal unitary faith, this atmic principle, this path of love, this duty of love, this obligation to love. All religions teach one basic discipline, the removal from the mind of the blemish of egoism, of running after little joys. Every religion teaches man to fill his being with the glory of God and evict the pettiness of conceit. 
It trains followers in methods of detachment and discrimination so that they may aim high and attain liberation. Believe that all hearts are motivated by the one and only God, that all faiths glorify the one and only God, that all names in all languages and all forms man can conceive denote the one and only God. Adoration is best done by means of love. Cultivate that attitude of oneness between people of all creeds, all countries, and all continents. That is the message of love I bring. That is the message I wish you to take to heart. At this conference, students from the Satya Sai Vidya Vihar, an elementary boarding school in the former British hill station of Utikamund, as well as the Baldika students from all over India, performed as Sai Baba watched from the audience. The motto of our school is, we must always speak the truth. Our actions must be dharmic. The second part of the motto of our school is, duty, discipline, devotion. Satya dharma ka paath karenge. In this scene, the children are portraying characters from the epic poem, the Ramayana. The Ramayana is a guidebook, a sacred text, an inspiring scripture for every man in all lands, whatever his creed or condition might be. It imparts poise, balance, equanimity, inner strength, and peace. Peace is the best treasure, without which power, authority, fame, and fortune are all dry and burdensome. Duty is God. That is the lesson the Ramayana teaches. The word duty is now used to indicate the methods by which one exercises his authority. No. Duty is the responsibility you have to respect and revere others and to serve them to the best of your ability. To exercise your freedom so that you do not limit or harm the freedom of others, that is the duty which becomes worship. Schools for students of all ages and colleges for men and women have been established under the Satya Sai Education Trust. Students in these schools study the arts, commerce, science, and history. They also study the larger truths which give new meaning to the knowledge which comes from books. In the years since the dedication of the Satya Sai College for Women in 1971, five additional colleges have opened. A recent development is the accreditation of the Sai College system by the Government of India as a university to be called the Sri Satya Sai Institute of Higher Learning. This is the first university system to be accredited since India achieved independence in 1947. And it is highly significant that the Sri Satya Sai Institute for Higher Learning 
is actively reawakening the spiritual values of the country's past for the benefit of the students who are its future. In order to rise to the full height of his glorious destiny, the only quality mankind has to strive for is spiritual love. Man is not a mere bundle of skills and acquisitions. Man has in him the yearning and the capacity to proceed from the narrow circle of I to the wide horizon of we. The human essence in man is divine. Man has been enslaved by money. He lives a superficial, hollow, artificial life. This is indeed a great pity. Man should seek to possess only as much money as is most essential for his living. The quantity of riches one must own can be compared to the shoes one wears. If too small, they cause pain. If too big, they are a hindrance while walking. What is the proof for having learnt these lessons? The proof lies in wholehearted service, in sweetness of speech, which reveals the divinity in man. The next step is hard work. The third step is prayer, that yearning one experiences to awaken the divinity latent in the heart. Whether at Prashanti Nilayam or at the college at Brindavan near the city of Bangalore, Sai Baba's example of service is a daily occurrence. Here, food is being distributed to some of the needy in the area. There are some who observe strict discipline in spiritual practices. This is good, but do not stick to that timetable even when you have a call to help some person whose need is great. If you give up your meditation and serve, you will benefit more from the service than what you may have gained from the meditation. Speaking with the children, Sai Baba continues morning darshan. Resolve to be good, lovable children from this moment. Do your duties gladly and well to the satisfaction of your well-wishers. If you feel sorry for the wrongs you did, that in itself will please God and He will pardon you. If you endeavor to turn a new leaf and become better, God will shower grace on you. Here you are given protection and education and an opportunity to learn how to be useful sons and daughters. Whenever an idea of hurting others or taking someone else's belongings or spreading falsehood about others enters your mind, turn to God for help. Ask Him to give you strength. For all these ideas are born of fear and cowardice, qualities which in turn come from weakness. Repeat the name of God or hum a bhajan song and you will find that all your bad thoughts will have fled, leaving you free from evil. Begin life anew from tomorrow. Revere the world as divine. Do not underestimate it as unholy. The scriptures say, all that is seen or heard is God. The inner world and the outer world are both immersed in God. Prayer must emerge from the effect to the cause. The individual self has to yearn for the supreme self. It must emerge from a pure heart. The drinking cup must be clean both on the outside and the inside. Prayer should not arise out of the tongue as music rises out of a phonograph record. When the song does not come from your depth, when you are not involved in it, how can it draw God unto you? Yourself must achieve confidence. Then that self-confidence will lead to self-sacrifice and self-realization. Man means he who marches from the status of self towards the all-inclusive self, from the individual soul to the universal soul. Towards the success of that march, all nature can provide advice and guidance. The real teacher one must rely upon is nature, saturated with God. 
God does not teach directly. He teaches through nature, which surrounds us. When we teach letters of the alphabet to children, we pronounce them loudly and at the same time write them on a slate. God has written on every speck of nature. That is the slate from which we have to learn of him. So do not renounce the world or condemn nature. Do not restrict the God of the universe to any one name and form. Love all names and forms. Love is the highest virtue. Develop love by sharing it. Revere the universe as your teacher. Expand your love worldwide. That is the message I wish to give you.